in the church of South India, when you come to join the church like Haley did this morning, that's right, the children's church. Let's let the children go. The children want to go. I thought a number of people were looking at me like they were ready to go. I'm talking about the little people. Be careful going down the steps. Take care of each other. Anybody else coming from high places? Okay. Here comes some. While they're coming, I'll tell you this. In the Church of South India, when you join the church, you kneel kind of like the way Haley did. Is somebody falling down the steps? <laughs> okay. Just keep us at kneeling. We'll get to it in a minute. Can you get it, babe? Okay. Got it. Anybody else? Okay. And you're received into the church. And then you stand up and you come to where the pastor was and you take the scriptures and you preach your first sermon. I think that there's something that's uh, pretty significant about that kind of thing, and that is that we're not sort of passive members of the body of Christ, but active members. And so with that in mind, Haley, <laughs> we're going to be reading the scriptures this morning. I'm going to ask you to read the Proverbs part. You got that? And you can stand and do that in just a minute. Let me, let me assign the other ones. Jeff, I'd like you to read the gospel. If you will re stand and read the gospel after Haley has read Proverbs. Uh, and let me see. Tim, you got your reading glasses on? And Tim, you read Romans after that. Haley, we'll begin with you, my dear. This is the word of God for the people of God. Isn't it rich when we are active as the people of God? Let's pray. Join us now, God, as the word written and the word preached converge as an act of your spirit to become a living word from you to us. In Jesus' name, amen. It is amazing the number of things that we call real that are simply facade. There was a funeral home down on the coast that was very, very beautiful if you looked at the front. But if you went just behind the front, the whole back was just fake. There are lots of churches that have a good appearance and do everything exactly as it ought to be done, but it's more appearance than reality. We need to ask ourselves, that's exactly what is reality. And what brought this to mind was Reality TV. Don't know how many of you look at that stuff. It's interesting to me. It doesn't take long to look at it before you realize how contrived it is. Specifically, how unreal it is. Example, how many of you are going to eat worms on purpose? All the time. Oh, no, it happens in human experience. But I mean on television. Not very long ago when we were in Talamic, we had one night at a very nice restaurant and they served worms because that's nice in that particular culture. And a couple of our people had some baked ones. And I was sitting next to Felipe, who was kind of an aristocratic Castilian Spanish fellow. And he said, if you were a real man, you'd eat worms. I said, call me whatever you like. <laughs> But reality is eating worms or, for example, purposefully sticking yourself in a whole bunch of bees or making a total and complete idiot out of yourself in front of other people on television. Look out, you know, because reality TV, the commercials are just as bad. If you have a white mustache, then you really are class. You not only drink leche, I mean milk, <laughs> You know, but somehow or the other, you're elevated to a new level of reality. Or what about the recent one about the barbecue chicken, you know, the barbecue all over the face? And this guy is so dejected because somebody else has more barbecue uh, sauce on his face and has eaten more chicken wings. Is it wings? Is it wings? Yeah, chicken something, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And this is reality. Okay, I don't want to push this too much, but a little further. Our church is the most real because it's the biggest. Our church is the most real because it's the smallest. Our church is the most real because it's the wealthiest. Our church is the most real because it's the poorest. Our church is the most real because it has the most sinners, amen, <laughs> that know it, you know. But be real careful about that because what we very often refer to as reality is in truth nothing but appearance and facade. And if we're looking for the real thing, that 
is a pretty important spiritual task. And I got to think about it, and as much as I didn't want to admit it, I had to come to the conclusion of, of finding, discovering, believing that these people who get involved in this kind of television have something to, take, to teach us. The first thing is just exactly what is real. What is reality? I mean, you can participate in a lot of stuff, and it doesn't take long to find out that it may or may not contain reality with that capital R kind of a thing. Reality that's enduring. For example, on the front of the bulletin is this wonderful thing. The Holy Spirit descended upon him, and a voice came from heaven saying, You are my son, my beloved. See, reality is not what you see. Reality is what you become. Reality is what you hear in the innermost part of your being. Reality is what your eyes see that is more than what sight allows, what your ears hear that is more than what ears bring to your attention. Reality is the depth that brings us past the out and into the in, past the facade and into the living center of things, the throbbing reality of the living God. And if I say to you right now that the Holy Spirit of God would like to say to you more than anything else and want you to know that this is reality, you are my most beloved. Would you let it in? Would you allow it to happen? Nothing is ever found that makes any difference without looking. Seek and you shall find. And so as you and I talk about the whole question of reality Christianity, we need to look for the real, and it's sometimes quite different from the way the world presents it to us. The other thing we can learn from these people is that they chose to do this on purpose. Can you believe that? <laughs> I watch every now and then. I know I'm telling you a lot about my television habits. Uh, we don't watch a lot of TV, but this little Japanese program, have you all seen that one where they're trying to walk across... <laughs> Uh, trying to walk across these rolling uh, drums and things like that and balance yourself on some impossible thing. Some of it's not very nice. Uh, but these people think that the most important thing in life and the most real thing is to be able to run across these turning drums and not fall into the water. And they almost always fall into the water, you know. And I've thinking about those people that run across these things and leap from one to the other and they finally get to the other side and they do this kind of stuff. And the whole world says, so what? But, you know, you and I have a faith that we may choose. I have decided to follow Jesus. And that's easy enough to say, but you're going to start thinking about it. It involves a lot of tough stuff. It involves good days and bad days. It involves bright, sunny times like this. It involves the dark nights of the soul when you say, where is God and why did God let this happen? And I don't understand everything I know about Jesus and I wish I could figure this out. See, all of that's a part of it, but we have chosen a way that is not all easy answers, but it is always a continuing resource. You may not have a flip chart to give you four spiritual laws that will answer every quest of your own heart, but you have a spirit that is holy, that is close, closer than hands and feet, according to the scripture, ministering to us no matter what. And so you can choose to do a good thing even if the good thing involves some difficulty. You can choose to do the divine will even if the divine will takes you to the cross. One of the astounding discoveries in my own life was something that happened between a person that said to me, if it is God's will for us to live in this world and be faithful, then God's will is that Jesus should die on a cross to save us from our sins. Interesting. Is that where God's will stops? Is Good Friday the end of the faith, or is by grace that holy and lovely Sunday that follows where we see the will of God? It is not the Fridays of crucifixion that mark reality faith. It is the Easter Sundays after the crosses are done. That's the last word. And so they chose to do this, and so we also choose to follow Jesus. And the other thing is they try to stay in this crazy stuff. What was that girl from Liberty? She was so disappointed because she got beat out of the reality TV thing, you know. Um, they choose to stay with the stuff, doing all these terrible things, you know, like eating the worms and being in the bees and what, being covered up in mud you have a whole new dimension, a uh, whole, whole new dimension. <laughs> my, little, my little mouth doesn't want to get along with my little brain. A whole new dimension to a mud 
treatment, you know, <laughs> out there in the mud and all that kind of stuff, you know. Uh, but they want to stay with it. They don't want to let it go. They don't want to give up. They want to back up. You know, there are a lot of things that impress me. I think about the Apostle Paul. I fought the good fight. I finished the course. I've kept the faith. But you know what? I think about the apostleship of other men and women. I think about standing there in that pulpit at that funeral home on Highland Colony Parkway as Earl Jones' family mourned the death of Earl Jones. And I was able to look at those people and say with absolute confidence and in total and complete reality, here is a man that fought the good fight and kept the, that, that, that finished the course and kept the faith. Some of us start and some of us stop and some of us start and we keep on going until we're done. And that's reality. And that makes the most difference. One thing more. They chose to do this for a purpose. Um, the purpose was a reward, right? And so we ought to also make a choice of faith for a reward too. You know what the reward for being a Christian is? Going to heaven, right? Well, that's part of it. You know what the reward for being a Christian is? You're going to be healthy, wealthy, and wise, right? Well, well, the reward for being a Christian is that you're so much better than everybody else. I mean, you just look around and you see all these sorry sinners and you know how much better you are than them. I mean, if there's anybody we know in the Scriptures is that guy that said, well, I thank God I'm not like that. <laughs> the only problem is somebody's looking at us and saying the same thing to us, huh? You know? You know what the chief reward for being a Christian is? That you are one. That you're giving yourself to being what it is you think to be real. <coughs> worthwhile. And worthy. We used to make fun, some of y'all remember this, when we were in graduate school, we would get in the shower and make fun of some of the radio preachers. They were about as bad then as they are now. Um, but the minute they'd hit the air, they'd say, send me money. You know, and we were young theologians, and we thought that was great, so we get up there, and there was one called, well, I won't tell you the name of it, but anyway, their theme song was, I'm going to build me a cabin in the corner of glory land, hallelujah, boom. And then the man would come on and say, now send me a free will offering of not less than $10. And he'd get to preaching, you know. And so we're in the shower, four of us in the shower. Uh, every university, we say, I'm going to build me a cabin. You know, and a bum. And this one boy, David Shockley, he was saying, now, brothers and sisters, I just want you to get Jesus in your heart. And the minute you get him, send me $10. I need it. I really need it. And you need to send it too. You know, we're going on like this, and we turn around. And here is William Cannon, who is not only the dean of the school, but who has just been elected a bishop of the church. You know, Cannon Towels? Yeah. Um, I mean, everything is proper and right. And he said, <coughs> <coughs> Now, you know our condition as we stand there. <laughs> and he says, My beloved brethren, whenever you diminish another son of God or preacher of the gospel, you diminish yourself. Moreover, you, despite your present attire, <laughs> are sons of eternity. You dare not forget it. Some of us are pretty quick to make fun of pie in the sky Christianity. And then we go right on occupying our few short years in what we call time, and then forever. Might not hurt us to choose the purpose that is the most real for now and for later. It is Thou, Lord, Thou, Lord only, that makest me dwell in safety. I hear a lot of things from a lot of people. To me, it's both touching and wonderful that we have people in our church who understand that faith is not always quick, easy, and glib, that true faith involves a lot of growing, a lot of changing, a lot of doing. But not very long ago, I had somebody that had just got their one-year chip for recovery, for sobriety, and said to me, I have made a decision. I said, what's that? I was thinking he was going to say, 
I'm going to continue to stay sober. I'm going to continue to try to do right. He said, it maybe is the most important decision I've ever made. And I said, okay, what? And he said, I have decided to get real with what's real. I have no intention of drawing pictures. Couldn't if I wanted to. But I can say to you, when your heart gets to the place that you can say, I've decided to get real with what's most real. Then trust me, dear brother, dear sister, you're on your way to reality Christianity. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. It's strange, God, because we try to hold ourselves back and we find only ourselves in misery. We give ourselves up and we find more of ourselves than we thought was there. We try to win and beat down the opposition and we lose. And every now and then, every now and then there is that rare moment that we simply open up and give up. Sort of a kind of surrender that acknowledges our humanity. And out of that moment of surrender is kindled the coal of a raging fire that can eventually become true and wondrous victory. It's amazing. Give us all of that, God, and a whole lot more. In the name of Jesus, amen.